This episode of Quite Frankly was made possible by our friends from MacFun. Great photo editing software for Mac. Go to our special MacFun community website for exclusive deals just for you guys. Hey guys, and welcome to this episode of Quite Frankly. Now, I love to tint my images, right? I, I always tell people I'm a 99% digital photographer, but in my heart, I'm a 100% analog photographer. And yes, you heard it correct, 1% still analog. I love to shoot film, develop it, it's a kind of magic. Now, to get those tints in those images, you can use plugins. Now, the one that I love to use is DxO Film Pack and Alien Skin Exposure X. Now, I was retouching this image because Nadine actually asked me, do you still have images from professional imaging? Now, to be honest, I don't remember a lot about this shot when I shot it because I was very, very sick and on stage and yeah, that didn't went, <laughs> that didn't go very well, let me put it that way. But still, I love the image. So I'm retouching this image at the moment and I saw something in Alien Skin that I wanna share with you guys that, well, might shed some light on how I approach the whole tinting thing. So uh, let's go into my alien skin. So go into filters, alien skin exposure X. And one of the things I love about alien skin is you have to hover over mode. So what I mean with this is what I can do is I now selected already a look, but I can, for example, go here. Let's say I like this look more. So I click on it. And now this look is active. So when I move my pointer over here, you can still see this look. The fun thing is I can just hover over the other looks until I find something that I like better. So as soon as I move my cursor here, you can see that I see the one that's active. Now with a lot of software uh, plugins, you have to select the previews because otherwise you don't see what's going on on the screen. So imagine this, I love the Chinese horror. I want to see this one. So I have to click that one. I have to click that one. I have to click that one. And now I don't remember which one I like most. So this is really cool because now I can hold this as my reference and I just go over the uh, previews and I see what I, uh, I see what I choose straight on the screen without the need for any clicking. So let's say I like this even more. So now I make this my new reference. Now I go on. See if I find something that's even cooler. And by the way, all these presets you can buy on my website. They're only seven euros fifty, and it's a pack that includes a lot of those presets. Now this is the one I'm working on uh, at the moment, the 2016. But this is actually the pack that's already online, and it has a lot of different looks. Now don't use the looks as they are. They are meant as your starting point. As you can see here, I will change the looks in a moment. Okay. Let me see if I can find something that's really intense. Okay, and as you can see, I still have my reference point in top. And I'm still switching between the different looks. And this is really how I do it. I take my time to really find a look that I like. And let me see this one I really love. It's, it, it's very slightly blurred on the sides. And I really love that old vintage look. You still have a lot of detail in the in the balloons. You can see that they're different colors, but it's all a little bit more monotone. So let's see if we can give a little bit more to the reds. There we go. Maybe add a little bit of contrast. Really nice. And protect the highlights. There we go. Okay, love this. Now what I want to do is I want to give it a little bit more of a blur effect. So I'm going to go to the bouquet or bouquet or however you want to pronounce it and engage. And I can move this over my model. There we go. Now, one of the things that I really want to stress to you guys, don't overdo this. You can, of course, go all the way and go like, yeah, funky, but this is more like a mess. So I will just start at zero and very, very slightly and gradually just add a little bit more. I don't want it too, too blurry. So I really love this effect. Now you could say, well, you hardly see the effect. Well, if I disengage it, you can see that you have a very, very distinct effect. Now I also want this head of, uh, hand, of course, to be sharp. So what I do is I'll actually, this is so cool about alien skin. And a lot of other software packages also have this option, of course. You can really tailor made your uh, fall off for the blur and the area you want sharp. So really nice control. And of course you can also make it smaller 
or wider, narrower or wider, of course. Okay. Love this effect. Okay. Now, one of the things that I normally won't do that much is add special effects like the overlays. Actually, I always tell people I skip that part because I don't think it's very interesting. I always call it Instagramming your images. But sometimes an image just screams for that effect. So let's see what we can do here. Just engage and make sure that everything is off. So no texture, nothing. And go to lighting effect. And now it has to fit the image. So something like this I won't do. You see, this looks too fake. It just doesn't feel for me with the image. Now, this one I do like, but I know there's a much, much cooler one. So go to Sun Flare and actually take this one. Now, as you can see, I've just lifted my image from OK, in my opinion, to Wow. Because this is OK, but now when I add this, it really gives you that immense feeling, that, that feeling of it's almost a surreal image. Very, very cool. Now what I can do is I can also zoom the effect. So if I don't like the beams going that way, I can actually zoom the effect and make it narrower or wider. And of course you can change the opacity. Now in this case I wanted full blast. So really love the effect. And of course you can still see the before and after. And this is what I do with tinting. I, I see this cooking. You really create a certain recipe. And of course you can store the recipe as a preset for your next images. So check out Alien Skin Exposure X. It's absolutely awesome. But don't overdo the effects. But in this case, this image just screamed for it. And that's why I recorded this episode of Quite Frankly. To show you a little bit inside my mind what I do when I do my tinting. So thank you so very much for watching, guys. And see you later.